probably their own fault that they left it slip at the end. We, myself and Jimmy, we were attacking, we'll be talking about it later, but it does count that fast start that Fossa had. Did you think that was crucial as well? Yeah, the first thing to say, Mort, is that this is from before this championship even started, Fossa have been completely disrespected. I don't understand why that has been the case or where it's come from. Like, they got to the final last year, they lost by a single point to Milton Castlemaine. They could easily have won that match. They have the Clifford brothers who are arguably the two best players in Kerry and two of the best footballers in Ireland. They started the championship as 12 to 1 outsiders. Even on Saturday morning, we were down to the last eight, and I think they were 10 to 1 to go all the way. And I think they might yeah. even have been 2 or 3 to 1 to win the match on Saturday night. Yeah. I don't understand that. I, uh, it, it beggars belief, in my opinion. Um, I think I said it on the programme last week. I fancied Fossa to win the game. As John said, like, when the Cliffords are up for a match and when there's a game that whets their appetite even more than a normal game of football does, because we know they are football addicts and they love the game and they love their club. Yeah. But this was always a game and an opposition and a venue that was going to get their blood pumping. Yeah. They, Fusser, and as John said, the strength and depth that maybe wasn't there before. Like They've come up from 4-3 to three and 3-2 three to two and easily held their own in two over the last three years without the Clifford brothers in the county league. So... The, they're greater than the sum of their parts and the players now that are developing Kieran O'Sullivan, huge addition uh, from Nemo Rangers this year Kean O'Shea developing into a massive midfielder Rian Yeah, Rian Collern was yeah. outstanding yeah. at the weekend Emmett O'Shea who's an excellent yeah. forward in his own right well capable of getting scores even if the Cliffords weren't there yeah. so I'm not surprised at all that Fossa got the win yeah, Jimmy, as a man who doesn't like Fossa and has said it at the very <laughs> early stage that they weren't that great and they didn't have, you know, other than the Clippers, they didn't have much in fairness. Far from the golden uh, nugget, would that be correct for Jimmy? Uh, it would, no, I think they have relented. Oh. They will leave them in for soup and sandwiches, but no alcohol can be consumed. Um, but yeah, Jimmy, when you're looking at them and you're looking at the team they have, you have to also give credit to their backroom. Um, you have Adrian Sheehan, you have, I think Kino Sullen is in with them, and you aim it for Morris. Now, Eamon, like, regardless of what people say, I mean, he's a master tactician, he's a good coach, and if you have that experience in there, those domestiques, as we'd call the likes of, you know, Keane McCarthy, Myers, um, Paddy Sheehan, these fellas, Dan O'Keefe, all of them less have been playing County League and they've been playing to a system. And I think they've got to stage now and you introduce then the Clifford's Matt bringing these guys into them and, all, and they really have it now down that they are a force. They're a very good intermediate team, if not better. I think, remember that for most of my lifetime and with no disrespect to the, the great players like Donald Sullivan and these, yeah. um, Fossa would have been thrilled, thrilled if they could get over the line, the novice. Yeah. I mean, winning a junior title. Just like John Kennedy would, would have be. Been, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it, yeah. no offense yeah, to but that's yeah. absolutely for the word there. Father's yeah. Plan Cup, is it our Father Galvin Cup? They have that Father Galvin Cup. Father Galvin Cup. No, who, I think he was actually president of Aston Stags. He time. was, yeah. That's Father Michael Gallivan. A great, great yeah. football man. Great man, yeah. Great um, football man. Lived to good old age as well. You mentioned the Fossil management and it is an absolutely outstanding management team but the thing is for me if you look at the age of those players yeah Fossil people like Dermot Clifford James O'Shea I, I couldn't name half the people involved more to me more than yourself they've been working on building this team for a generation yeah. Yeah. this isn't out of no, no. this isn't yeah. out of nowhere at all work started on this 20 years ago, yeah. while a lot of us weren't paying attention. And you can say, you know, David and Paddy Clifford, oh my God, they came out of yeah. nowhere. They didn't come out of nowhere. It's like a story like and Temple Noah. Do you remember Temple Noah came up planning. from, from Division 4 or 5 and way up and now Absolutely. Senior Club? And Similar story, really. Uh, exactly. They, they brought a generation through and, they, and yeah. they brought them seeing the club as their place, their community. And Fosser, Fosser are now on a huge height. There's a growing population out there. It, yeah. it, it, They're mostly crooks for it that live out there. I, I, I know. 
Um, well, it's simply an issue, and it's an issue in Chile, it's an issue in Dingle. It's, you'd be surprised how many of the traditional big yeah. urban clubs in Kerry, and yeah. my understanding is it's a national trend. Yeah. Young families can't afford to buy a yeah, house yeah, in, yeah. in the you urban know, areas, <coughs> so they're moving out. Yeah. You know, we and, have a demographic <coughs> up in Kerry called Michael Murphy from Knocknagash. <laughs> no, you're taking over from but one, <laughs> you make a very good point. This this is going on. Dermot yeah. O'Shea has done work on this. John yeah. Kelly, Pax Bland, did yeah, an awful yeah. John Kennedy. It. Oh, John Kelly, sorry. John Kelly, sorry. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I got mixed up. <laughs> John Kelly <laughs> is scary. But you know something, Jimmy, as well, sorry for. You made the point about the management, but you look at the players. We saw them up close twice now. The, f- the condition of them, yep. the work they are putting in. You, c- you can have the best management team in the world, but if the players don't respond... Yeah, they must buy into it. I yeah. think the work they are doing, the fitness they have, and the conditioning of them compared to two or three years ago, massive yeah. work. Massive work, That's yeah. It. I thought it, even last year, no, the, you draw a true fuss during their All-Ireland campaign. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that All-Ireland campaign... The bit of tiredness from that. I, I keep harping on that I don't think players are getting enough of a break in the mm-hmm. season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought that maybe legs would catch up with them. I actually thought, if you remember their opening game yeah. against Beaufort, mm-hmm. um, they, they ended up losing it by a point. Yeah. But for the first 40 minutes, I mean, I criticise them for it. I make absolutely no apologies and they're for, you for, for that. It, actually, yeah. <laughs> Do you know? They said it to me. Jimmy was very critical for 40 minutes against Beaufort. The, the couple, no, but the couple that I spoke to agreed with me. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. No, but they're ex crooks for his living in Boston. I'm not, and agreed with you. I'm not having any dig, but I'm just saying no one's here to put lipstick on things. When a game is bad, we have to actually yeah. say, look, that's bad. And they were bad. And I think that might have been why there was a bit of underrating. I'd also, until last weekend, I, I'd kind of forgotten, with all the talk about the Cliffords, and they do deserve it, yeah. If you remember, Shane O'Sullivan had an absolutely spellbinding year last year. That's one of the best keepers. Yeah. Best yeah. Keeper. Him, himself and Sean Caffey are absolutely yeah. outstanding. Yeah, yeah. I just, are you I just suggesting saw there that, today, yeah. Casper Are you Robert suggesting that the Clifford brothers are not good football in the minor team? team. <laughs> You're just saying, the, you, you, you dismiss them. What just I'm saying... Look, Strickeen is behind us. What the I'm saying but, is that look, they're, far, they're far from the only football there. They're not carrying oh. a team. Yeah. You know, Keanu again, playing no. well though. But when it, when it came to Trumps, Rahalis have been winning those kind of midfield battles yeah. and so on. With David Moore you know, and yeah. Um, and Tom Hoare. Keanu Ke- yeah. Ke- yeah. was up there with them last week. Yeah. And these are the players, I mean, <laughs> there, there's no two players no. going to win you a championship. Would you Kerry, put him in with... And not the uh, intermediates. Which the is an team, would you miss out with Kerry, um, Keane, or is he... I, I keep saying it, you see, we'll be looking at us at the end of this championship and, you know, who do we bring in? And the truth is, you can bring in 150, but you can't train 150. I'm sure all of these will be called in and given a look. Yeah. And a see. Mm-hmm. I, a couple, you, I think the last day, there's three Darrell O'Connors. You could nearly, you know, you've Rahalis, you've Beaufort, you've Ken Mary, you could nearly call all of them in. We had three Do you remember well, the right? time, Jimmy, we had three Ronald O'Connors, Kilcommon, and Belly Duff, and say Michael, Michael Clyde Moore, <laughs> and you confused yeah. the three of them, uh, you called them all Ronan O'Connors. <laughs> I, I, I remember at the time talking to Tim Moynan of Kerry Radio, he said at least you can do something about it in paper. What am I supposed to do? Run on, run, run on O'Connor to run on O'Connor to run on O'Connor. I think it's I going to be a sore one, though, more for Karen's rallies. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. What's yeah. the reaction? Yeah, what do you think the reaction will be? I, I, I think... You know, they look back on it now and they realise they got 13 scores from 29 chances and they got off to a really bad start. Their first half performance wasn't up to the standard that they had showed in their previous matches. And then, inspired probably by Tommy Walsh coming off the bench at half time, they improved considerably, but they still wasted and wasted far too many opportunities. Like, they'll feel they could have won the game on the second half showing. And if they'd have got through, who knows how far they'd have gone. Because I think they were another team that were kind of underestimated at the start of the season. And yeah. they did very well to win their three group uh, their three group stage matches. And like there was always a reason why David Moore and Tommy and Barry John Keane hung around for another season, you know, they they still have great pride in the in the Do you think they should hang around maybe for the county championship? Well uh, with Sam Brendan from their pick. From my point of view, I would hate for the three of them if that was their last yeah. in inverted commas big match yeah. at the top level. Mm-hmm. 
if they're if they're asked in by James Costello to get involved with St Brendan's, I would love as a neutral if they do because they do have the memory of losing the county championship final with Karen Zarahalis only three seasons ago, and they don't have uh, a Bishop Moynihan Cup medal in their grasp. And before they end their careers, and I, I, I do really believe that St. Brendan's are dark horses for this uh, county championship later in the year. So, yeah, most definitely, if JM's calls them in, I would love if they can be involved. Yeah, to finish on uh, this game, uh, John, obviously it's a difficult venue because there's a huge crowd there. You don't have a stand there as such, like I think that's all due to they're so close to houses there mm, yeah. that have to move out there to, to put a stand there up a certain mm. level uh, there's no press facilities there basically again one of the reasons they can't build a decent press box they had a, a kind of a cement one you'd go in there I went in there so many times and I had a big lump on my head because when you kind of put your head up you hit the cement <laughs> and <laughs> if there's a match between my head and a cement block as Jimmy will tell you, the cement block always wins. Isn't that right, Jimmy? <laughs> I'd always be supporting the cement block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, when you have friends like that, who needs enemies? Uh, but John, looking at it, and uh, there, was, there was some people were given out who shouldn't be given out about uh, that element of it. You know, the the, the camera work, etc. I tell you, if you were up there, or if you could climb a ladder like my son Jimmy had to, it's difficult. But uh, but that aside, do you think that? Um, Fossa, now that they're in the semi-final, we'll be, be, be discussed it so just briefly. Do you think that that was a game that kind of defines them and puts them in a position now where you can say, yeah, these are contenders, these are real contenders? Yeah, there's no doubt. I thought they were contenders even early on, Mort, but this was yeah. kind of an acid test at the moment. Yeah. Went to Strand Road, playing Kem Zorahelis, and to win in the way they won, you know, and the balance of the team. Uh, I think the conference is there, they're back in the semi final. But to agree with what John said there, you know, 13 put scores for Kevin Zorahalis, Jack Savage got nine. You got yeah. four points on the rest. Yeah, it's not a That lot, was probably yeah. the Achilles heel on the night, you know, and you, you, we've spoken about the Fossa with the spread of players, and they're not totally dependent on David to mm-hmm. shoot the lights out. He got five points the last day. But yeah. they, they, it has been balanced around and evenly yeah. balanced with the other spread of scores. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And exactly. I think that's, that was a crucial one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll be talking about FASA again when they reach, uh, when we discuss, when we preview rather the, the semi-finals uh, at the weekend. So next, now we're going to look at, I think, which is really, despite the fact that it's my club that was involved, uh, Glenbeg Linkar. Um, the victory of Glen Carr up in Beaufort, that was one that really caught me. Not because I would want to demean Glen Beglin Carr in any way, but having seen Beaufort, uh, a lot of lads saw Beaufort against uh, Foss and were impressed, Jimmy. But my son John O'Dowd, and I go to John first, we saw them out against Desmond's and like Darren O'Connor, like we were raving about him, Kieran Dennehy and uh, you had Ronan Murphy at midfield, Mike Breen, Sean O'Brien like our man at the match. And we were saying, I know they didn't have the Dennehy brothers, these guys are going to rattle it. And we were, I was thinking in my own mind, probably themselves and the stacks now are the two that should be making the final. And yet, they fell behind there early. And you'd like to have Gavin O'Grady, Dan O'Sullivan, these guys, they have been around for a while now. Experience packed, can he last it until, until the 30th minute, the 32nd minute. But like, that was some win. Was it tactically Peter O'Sullivan got it right? Was it the fact that maybe Beaufort underestimated them? Or did they just have bad luck on the day, uh, John O'Dowd? I'd say you could nearly say there's probably a mixture of all of those elements involved in the result. Um, first thing you've got to say is that it's been an outstanding season for Glen Bay, Glen Carr. No matter what happens now for the remainder of the year, yeah. they got promoted out of a very difficult Division 2 of the County yeah. League into the top flight for next season. That's, that's a stunning achievement. Yeah. Um, Peter O'Sullivan has already proved over the last numerous seasons with Mid Kerry yeah, in the county do. championship that he's an excellent manager always capable of getting the best out of yeah. each team that he has at his disposal very calm and laid back yeah. manager too yeah but this this result was definitely a mild surprise you could never say it's a shock because in a local derby yeah. the general form will go out the window and neither side will be afraid of each other um, you'd have from a Beaufort point of view you'd, you'd have to be disappointed yeah. like 
Dave this Beal is not their first time. No. I have nothing against Beaufort, but Dave this Beal is not. I remember doing this in the Gale, I think it was 2019 or whatever year it was, of a Saturday morning, and they were hot favourites. The Gale were missing Jack Barry and lots of the lads, and uh, they met in the car park. They were going to give a walkover. They played the game, and they beat Beaufort. And I, I couldn't believe that result. And again, uh, on Saturday evening, I found this difficult to believe. Yeah, they've been there or thereabouts, especially in this competition over the last nu- numerous four, five, six seasons. And it's a competition yeah. that they really want to win and that yeah. they believe they're good enough to, to win. Another fine manager in Aon O'Malley who's been there for a, a little period of time as well. Yeah, I think they would have expected to get over this one. So maybe that, that touches on the possibility of a small bit of complacency. Then you say as well that luck didn't go their way as well. Do you know, Dara O'Connor the hit the post. There was... There was a couple of other chances that hit the post uh, yeah. during that game as well. There was misses. Um, they, they fought back yeah. with two late scores to try and get the equaliser, but they just uh, ran out of time. I think most certainly an opportunity missed from a Beaufort perspective. Yeah. They should be in the semi-finals. Um, they'll have to wallow in that now for a while before they face into the mid carry Championship later in the year. But I think this is going to hurt them big time, it this will, particular yeah. result. But from a Glen Bay point of view... They're just, you, you wouldn't like to say that they're overachieving because yeah. they possibly feel that yeah. they have the squad that are, are certainly uh, should be among the contenders yeah. for this, yeah. this trophy. But from the outside perspective, you might think that they are overachieving a small bit. Yeah. Yeah. But as well as the experience that they have, there are players like uh, Liam Smith at midfield yeah. who are really, really developing. That's right. John uh, Kennedy, if you look at it, um, Glimbeck, Glincar, their players... If they had Pat Kilkenny fully fit, and we don't know, he went off and he had been out for a while. And his first cousin, of course, is Gavin O'Grady. And Gavin was going, I think, on Sunday to Dubai. I hope he's coming back. I presume it's a holiday he was going to. He's a sister out there and uh, he teaches in Presentation Milltown. That's probably back to school the following week, first week in September. So I don't think he's going there for any length of time. But surely he'll be back for Sunday. They need Gavin. Darren has kind of got a new lease of life, as well as a new haircut. Um, and you have uh, Liam Smith at midfield. Uh, you have Kieran Doyle, who's come back in. He missed a lot of time with him. He's in the back line. You have the Roaches, Liam and Aidan. I don't know where Sean's gone to. Um, but there's a lot. Colin McGillicuddy and, and Liam Smith at yeah. midfield. Yeah. Liam Smith. Now, you're a man who was around a lot of good midfielders in your day, although you weren't a great midfielder yourself, because you played <laughs> in the forwards. But... Uh, you uh, the likes of Jacko and these guys, and you see um, Colin McGillicuddy at midfield and himself and Liam Smith, and they were up against Mike Green, a current Kerry player, and Ronan, Ronan Murphy, Murphy, who had a great game in Castle Island and has been one of the better club midfielders, I would suggest, in the county from mm-hmm. Beaufort for a good number of years now. He's not that old either. Um, do you think that could be a big uh, bonus for them the next day? based on what they're seeing, to have a guy like young Liam Smith kicking two points and dominating midfield. Yeah, he's been the, the player of the championship, really. He's, he's, he's a player that's, you know, I suppose when Kerry season finishes, the GA people that go to the games, to all the games, they're looking at potential players. Yeah. And I'm not saying the Kerry manager, I'm talking about the supporters. Yes. And this is a name that's coming up time and again, Liam yeah. Smith. Very impressive. Very good basketballer as well, I can tell good you. Good hands. Yes. And, hands, you know, yeah. able to score. Um, and then, like, you, 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 you mentioned names there. And you had in the likes of Caelan Tehan and Jack Braston. Yes. Into that team. Yeah. You know, Pat Hilkin has been one of the best defenders at club level. Yeah. Over Man the markers. Man yeah. marker. Yeah. He is the player that's on the, the opposition's best player to yeah. nullify him. Yeah. Hugely impressive. Um, yeah. But they have, a, they have a very decent squad. And like John said, they're, they're, they're on a, a tremendous roll. Like. Fantastic year for them. Yeah. A derby game, it's always difficult to call. It is. I it felt is. last week, I, I picked both, and I thought they'd shared it. Yes. You know, but uh, Glen Bay, Glen Carr were in the position going into the last game. They could afford to rest players against Austin Stacks. Yes. Because they were already qualified. They were, yeah. You they know, were the only team qualified, yeah. The only team yeah. qualified. Yeah. That was a bonus. And they were afforded the chance of looking at other players. It's yeah. all about game time. And Peter O'Sullivan, super manager. Oh, he's good, Doing yeah. a great job. And as well with Mid Kerry also. But uh, very astute. And uh, Glenn Bear there on merit. Um, yeah. But it was a real battle. And Beaufort will be very disappointed. You know. Will, yeah. They, yeah. They were At expected last. by a lot of people, neutrals, to win the game. Yeah, yeah. But championship football... It's so competitive in Kerry. Yeah, 
very difficult. And call. that intermediate championship, as we've said oh, here, yeah. and has been said by many people, is difficult. It's a tough competition. Yeah. It's a hard competition. Jimmy, could you see, and I just move on to next day briefly, Liam Smith may be taking on uh, Joe O'Connor, an inter-county player, and uh, there Liam is up against him. Would, do you think he'd have a chance against him? Um, no, I will say, in Joe O'Connor, you're talking about another one of the players yeah. of, the, of the weekend. Yes. He was absolutely outstanding. I'll tell you, I, I still think Joe O'Connor would have that slight little edge as yet. Put Liam Smith in, into a carry training regime, and we'll see. But I'll tell you this yeah. much, yeah. I'd have no problem paying in at the gate to that. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's, that's, you don't think, listen... The last time you played in at the gate anywhere because of your uh, your Crow Park card. The last time you played in at the gate was shortly after your confirmation uh, when your mother brought you along to a game other than a spa game where you get in for nothing anyway. So how can you talk about playing in anywhere? Is that I, true? I always give my name with Mark Murphy. Oh, that's okay. Well, you'll be allowed in for nothing because just to keep you, keep, keep Mark Murphy quiet. Uh, yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the Glimber game. Uh, Glenn Bagley Carr causing a small bit of uh, a surprise, not a major upset because it's a derby, as John Kennedy said, but at the same time, uh, a one point win, uh, 11 points to 10 there, and Beaufort will be disappointed. And uh, we'll be back now shortly after a break. Right, now we're going to turn to. Another game in the quarterfinals of the Kerry Petroleum Intermediate Championship, and that was out in Glenflesk on a very sun drenched and beautifully prepared pitch out there. Fair play to the club in Glenflesk, and they looked after the media well there. Uh, my son Jimmy were doing that game live on Clubber. That was Glenflesk against Long Rangers. And uh, with about a couple of minutes to go, because we were also going on to Ratmore, we were kind of saying, well, they're a point or two up and they'll hang on, but they didn't hang on because the game, uh, Fiacre Clifford got the equaliser in about the 64th minute and then we were treated to 10 minutes each way extra time and Jimmy had to hire a Formula 1 car and uh, take a back road to Schroen into uh, Ratmore pitch and he arrived there a half an hour after the game had ended. <laughs> but anyway, talking about the Glen Fless game, I have to say I really enjoyed that game. So maybe before I move across to the lads, uh, Jimmy, you were actually uh, there in live and living colour. Um, what a game uh, and what a contest. First of all, t talk about how good the game is and then I'll ask you, did you feel that Jim Fresk might have left it go in normal time? But first of all, the game, full attacking, full blooded football. Absolutely. Yeah. Three nineteen to two eighteen. Yeah. Do you know extra time down to the wire with I think with two minutes time left in the extra time, it was two eighteen apiece. Yeah. And Long Rangers just had enough to get over the line. They got a goal. Yeah. Um, and they had a chance of another one and Sean Cleary quite wisely fisted it over the bar to put four between them and that was that. But absolutely brilliant game. It was. I do think Glenn Flesk will have huge, huge regrets. Will they? There were six points clear at one stage in the yeah, second half. Yeah, there were seven half. even clear. Six in the second half, yeah. Had seven. chances yeah. to put it away. If you remember, Didn't Jimmy. take them. Yeah, if you remember, and I know you don't, right? If you remember, <laughs> with a couple of minutes to go, right? Uh, I no. What I remember is Mark Murphy <laughs> saying when Dara Roach had the ball, oh, for God's sake, he's not going to try and kick it over from there, is he? Yeah. Oh, good score. <laughs> yes, in NMD. <laughs> in NMD. Because nobody Look knew at the that video evidence, saying. people. <laughs> yes, yes, I did on three occasions, I think. And they were impo from impossible angles. Now, tell me this. Um, if you remember, they were a point up. Um, and it was deep in injury time. The ball was worked forward by Long Rangers and Tom Quittenden at midfield got it and he kicked it wide. Yeah. And you said the most prophetic thing you've ever said to me, the most truthful thing you've probably ever <laughs> said on air as well, you said this kick out, whoever gains this, is, is, is going to be crucial. This kick out is crucial, whoever gains possession. The ball broke right in front of us. It wasn't right. the exact case. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was calculation like it was yeah, a one point game. It was, but it was something that you would never yeah. see because <laughs> you were from Spawn, you're a pessimist. So, what I was saying was, before you rudely interrupted me again, Jimmy, uh, the is turnover. that uh, the, turnover. the turnover. The ball was grabbed by uh, Kevin Bowler, the number 11, uh, from the breaking ball. He careered forward, he had a man to his left, man to his right, couple of defenders trying to get back, including Oshin Daly, and I'd say it was Sean Cleary, the number four, that got back as well. It could have been Shane Clifford, won the two. And it came to, 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 to Roach, Dylan Roach, not Ian, the, it came to Dylan, I think. Uh, Dylan Roach got the ball. He looked like he was fouled, to be fair. The ref didn't give it. Now, afterwards, I was on a few Lord Rangers fellows who said it was a free in. We got away with one there. The ball broke to make a short story long or a long story short and eventually it came to Jamie Moynihan who, if you remember, sent the ball back out to, to, into his own half into the breadbasket of Tommy Bowler. But Tommy was stationary. He was... He, was, right. he, was, he, he had been down with cramp to his credit, so I'm not blaming. Gerard Hassid came around him, grabbed the ball, worked the ball around, gave it to the shooter, Theocra Clifford, to draw level and extra time, then they went down and win it. That two minutes of play, that sequence, Whittleton's miss, to the kick out, to the free that wasn't, to the turnover, that was crucial. That's, I mean... Isn't it well described by me? Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> these games really do come down to moments. Um, that was absolutely the crucial moment. But there were easily a hundred of them in that game that could have gone either way. I, I have to say, yeah. there wasn't a single you remember the Roach and the on the field who didn't perform. Yeah. Yeah, and Dara, Every one yeah. of them played out of their skins on both sides. And Dara Roach, the save by the keeper as well from Dara. That's, he was going that's through. right, yeah. It was incredible. They didn't miss chances. Now Dara had a great game, nine points. Oh, he, he was stunning. He kicked him. I thought all the Roaches... Jimmy Moynihan. Yeah, the three roaches. Jim, Jim. I believe they're three brothers, aren't they? They are, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Daryl and Ian and Dylan. That's right. Yeah. And the same mother, same father. All of them are good. That's yeah. what brothers are of mud. All right, I just <laughs> wanted to check the family tree. Go on. Um, thought Jamie Moynihan, absolutely outstanding. He's becoming a great footballer. Owen Clifford, centre back for Long Rangers. I mean, he absolutely yeah. dictated the game. You might have to I take Paddy Clifford I or thought, David Clifford. I thought the half-back yeah. lines. I, again, we, you know, we talked about Joe O'Connor and Liam Smith. I, I, I think put him up against Paddy Clifford. Again, I would happily go to see that. Would you, you wouldn't I, pay I, this I, end up? I absolutely, no. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> yeah, well, you, that's the one we've established that. I'm happy. But now, I'm just, brilliant game. Brilliant game. I, totally will, enjoyable. I will say it. Do you enjoy me coming I'm, down the ladder? I'm not quite sure that the better team overall actually came out of it. Oh, and I, way, I mean no disrespect to yeah. Long Rangers, yeah. but Glenn Fless by the will way, know themselves. They had the winning. They had the winning. And it just slipped away from them. By the way, what did you think of the camera work by Ozzy and the man in control's D? Do you think it was satisfactory? I thought <laughs> it was absolutely outstanding considering myself and Ozzy had some kind of a Lou Bon in the press box with him. I don't know what he was jabbering <laughs> about. It was, it was embarrassing for all Was that the guy who was able to get up and down the ladder yes. quickly? I, I remember at one point him saying, oh my God, he's not going to try and shoot from there, is he? It, nobody knew what to say. We just felt sorry for the man. Right, you know? enough said now and discredit <laughs> me like I'm trying to agree. I'm trying to... Trying to uh, in, in, enhance my reputation here and it's taking a savage beating now to a man whose reputation is <coughs> a savage beating over the weekend both men both of you saw you certainly saw them in Listol didn't you Long Rangers so you know Long Rangers uh, so do you think uh, that this win will bring them on or may, is, you know a close shave like that you would know Nashua with Tarbert Although he, he won most of your games, I he think, got to the final. I think overall, even though they didn't show it in the first night against uh, Karen Zorahalis inside yeah. Austin Stack Park, I think of the four teams that are left, Austin Stack, Lawn Rangers, from an overall perspective, have the best forward options of the four teams that are left. Even with Fossa having the Cliffords and Emmett O'Shea. But from a 10 to 15 point of view, and from the 17, 18, 19, 20 yeah. that they can bring off the bench. Again, I think, no, I think I, the Kilargan men have the best forwards. I think five points 
Uh, three from Matthew Leslie and two from yeah, John Burke. Three after from bench. three from Matthew Leslie off the bench. Yeah. Two from John Burke. Stephen Gannon didn't even come on the last day. I don't think off no. the bench. Kerry Miner last year very fast. He could be used as a Good real. Has he didn't score yeah. until any time though. He can be an until impact sub. Time. But they got three. Owen was brilliant. They got three twelve out of that starting forward line yeah. the last day as well. The two Hassets. Fikra Clifford is the playmaker. Dara Cleary is Dara Cleary is an excellent uh, forward, very fast as well. Then you have Titer and Patrick Daly do a lot of the hard graft in the forward line, yes. and then they do have those three forwards that can come off the bench. So I do think, especially in the later stages of games before they empty that bench, I think you need to have a three, four, five point lead on Lawn Rangers to be fully safe to get over the line. What do you think, John? Yeah, I agree with John. I think that Lawn Rangers, they're a team on the way up. Again, we've spoken a lot about managers and management teams. Liam Hassett, you know, yeah. he's been there. Shane Brosnan is there. Shane, Shane played with Stan Road for years. Yeah, huge experience. Married in Kilogan. Um, they've been on an upward curve, Lawn Rangers. You know, they've been, they've, a lot of, they've a great, have had a great youth policy. Yeah. yeah. These are coming through My friend now. Russell has brought that team up along at the youth level as well. Yeah, and a lot uh, of great work on yeah. in there. And I think that they're, you know, they're in the semi-final. Um, going out to Glen Flesk was a tough ask. You know, Glen Flesk, a very tough team to play out there. Seamus Moyne get, in the sideline yeah, there. To get John result. B, I don't know, isn't it? John, John B is John right, B, yeah. 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 Good. Um, and Pat Flanagan right. trains them like. Yeah. They were very, very fit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like, it is a common denominator on a lot of the clubs at the moment, the quality of people involved with them on yeah. the line. The experience they have, and uh, you know, it's reflected in the teams, and I think it's reflected in the football. And, yeah. and like Jimmy said earlier on, you know, there were cracking games at the weekend, and, and again, teams went at it. They did. There was defensive play, of course, but, yeah. but the teams were going at it. You, they were beating their men, they were shooting yeah. from the zone. They were. You know, they, they weren't shooting from impossible angles, but when they were in the zone, they went for a shot. Yeah. Their roast did shoot from impossible angles, and, yeah. as Jimmy told us. <laughs> <Exactly. Yeah. laughs> But like, they, I think it, it is refreshing as a farmer forward to see guys 30, 35, 40 yards out yeah. having a go rather than turning back and yeah. giving it back to their half-back Absolutely, line. Absolutely, yeah. And I think that the supporters are relishing it, to be fair. Considering what we've been watching all year at the county level, uh, it certainly is really refreshing yes. to see this yeah. type of football at club level. And as you say, some of the scores, the quality scores oh, in all the games we've been watching and all the claim, games that have been live and clubber, and that's something I've heard from some of my fr friends. Uh, Jimmy would say you're very few of them, but I have a few nationally, not locally, uh, who would tell me that they watch certain games. I don't know what's it, legally or illegally, but they watch them and they can't believe how good the yeah. club scenes in Kerry yeah. at intermediate level. They yeah. think that Fossa, Kanza Rallies, you know, long range, these are senior teams. Yeah. They don't understand their intermediate. No, no. It's a great Yeah, deal. I was just yeah, going to make exactly. the point. I was just going to make the point there that. Uh, it's, it's been said for ages that the Intermediate Championship is possibly the best yeah. in the whole county. Yeah. And if you look at the four teams that were knocked out at the weekend, Karen Zorahalis, Beaufort, Glen Flesk and Killarney Legion. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. They're all high-quality, yeah. high-caliber yeah. teams, and they haven't even made it to yeah. the semi-finals. Killarney Legion and Kenzo Rallies were in county finals in the last decade. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Rallies, uh, uh, sorry, Legion under Peter Keane lost mm -hmm. to South Kerry, didn't they? And yeah. Rallies lost to Stax. Well, David Moran get injured, that unfortunate. Uh, is that 2021, was it? Whatever 20, it was. 21, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely. Now, we, we will come back because I have a question to ask you about uh, the, uh, we'll say, the Long Rangers defence against the faster forward line. But we leave that to the preview and we'll have a quick sconce now at another game. And this is the game, of course, John, you were, John O'Dowd, definitely, you were heard uh, commentating on this, I believe, on Sunday. Um, although I turned down the sound. Um, no, I was working actually. Uh, it was uh, Austin Stacks 2 9, Kalani Legion now 13. Was it as close as that scoreline would suggest? Um, it was, even though Austin Stacks, from probably the start of the game, were the better team. They got the ideal start, they got a penalty after two minutes. Now, a very lucky that the penalty was converted. It was a definite penalty, but Adam Curran's shot was a brilliant save by Brian Kelly. He touched it onto the post, 
and as it came back yeah. it hit him in the back and went right back into the net so Stax couldn't have asked for a better start than that yeah but even though they always appeared to be in relative control they could never pull away from Legion Legion just dug in and dug in and dug in they were two points down at half time they kept in it really until Joe O'Connor really decided the game in the third quarter. Third quarter. He thundered into eight it. To eight, yeah. Eight. yeah, when he set up that goal for Paddy Lane, and he could have fisted it over the bar easily himself, Joe, when he came in along the left wing. But he, fought, he saw Paddy Lane at the back post. It was a bit like the way Paul Ganey set up the yeah. goal for Dara, Dara Dan O'Sullivan for Dingle in the senior game the previous day. When they got that goal, they went to six points ahead. But then after that, stacks were pretty much terrible for the last... Uh, 10 to 15 minutes of the game. Their game management was all over the shop. They only scored one more point, I think, and that was a, another Joe O'Connor point. Um, in the end, they were kind of hanging on a bit, even though Legion were missing James O'Donoghue. Obviously, William Shine has a long-term injury, and Finbar Murphy and um, Ryan O'Grady were just back from overseas. Off the plane, yeah. So, so they only came on near the end. But, like, I think it's fair to say, if Legion had... Um, all their forwards who they would like to have in that team at their disposal it could easily have been an upset because Stax while the better team they didn't exactly impress yeah, yeah. be very careful mm. giving a lot of praise to Legion you're in a Crokes household here do you understand that and there could be severe repercussions on you you could be barred from Jaxley's for mm. comments like that but yeah I hear, I'm hearing you with Legion John um, Stax sometimes I look at Stax right and I think they're an enigma. And what I mean by that is they have produced over the years some of the best footballers yeah. in the county and in the town of Tralee. But for some strange reason, they just don't put it together. Or do they have the best team? Is it an embarrassment of riches mm -hmm. and you don't know your best 15? Because if you look at... I can't understand... And look, Jimmy, uh, uh, the manager... Mm -hmm. Of Billy, of, Lee. Uh, Billy Lee, Billy, Billy, Billy yeah. sorry, Billy Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy's the brother. Billy Lee. I can't understand how Mike O'Donnell is starting, for example. What a player he is! Like for the last couple of years, big, strong man, ball man, like huge. But anyway, uh, there are. I mean, they have in the county players like Joey Nagel is playing. I, Henrik at the back. Heinrich, sorry. Um, you have Paulo Sullivan, good South Kerry man, good Valencia man back in the day. Um, and Dylan Casey, Dylan Casey yeah. uh, Tansley's in yeah. goals. You have uh, at midfield, you have Barry, Barry Shannon. Shannon. Jeez, Barry was an inter-county yeah. player. I'd say you had him as a minor, yeah. had you? Yeah. You had? Yeah, no, uh, he improved yeah. since, by the way. Uh, you had <laughs> Joe O'Connor at midfield, <laughs> Kerry Senior. <laughs> and you have, no, I was, that was the cut at you, by the way. You have Daniel Kirby, then the half forward line just after coming out of, uh, of school, we'll say. Yeah. And look at the full forward line. Paddy Lane. You have Greg Horn, who's in with Kerry, um, and then you have Keen Purcell, the goal getter. So they have so many players, but what's the perfect mix? Do they know their best team? That's basically what I'm asking. It's a good question, Martin. It has been asked a few times in the, I last, only ask good in the last couple of weeks. But um, they have an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. To know the best 15 sometimes. You know, um, they, they were probably the, the bookies' favourites to win the championship before there was a ball kick. Well, they were, they were hot. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And they're still, they're still favourites, I suppose. They are, yeah. Mind. yeah. But at the same time, you have to go out and win it. Yeah. And they're doing enough. Uh, like John said, they were just got over the line, hanging on in the end. It's a hypothetical question, like, but if Willem Shine and James O'Donoghue had been playing, would it have been a different game? Legion, Legion yeah. coming into 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 uh, Conley Park, you know, a tough ask, but they they gave it everything. Yes, you know, and um, not impressive, got over the line, but you look at the amount of players on that panel that have worn the green and gold jersey, at minor twenties and senior, it's 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 an incredible uh, bunch of players, um, yeah. and they're in the semi final. I think they'll have to improve, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. If they're going to justify the favourites, yeah. tag and win it. But as I said, Jimmy, they have, they have Michael O'Donnell as a sub. Like Shane O'Callaghan. Now, his mother thinks that I hate Stax, so <laughs> I better mention him because she'd kill me. She walks inside the GA pavilion, as you know, and every time she reckons, you he know, I never give him a mention. To be uh, honest, for me, last year, a big problem for Stax 
was that essentially they were playing Shane O'Callaghan almost as a lone forward, lone forward yeah. and everyone else playing back behind him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And to me, it, it, it wasn't football that I want to watch. At least, no, I mean, Keen Person was having a storming year. Yeah, he didn't score. I don't think that. No, he didn't no, score. no. Or go on. Yeah. No, no, but just he. He's oh, I know. I, I'm not. Year. I'm not. Yeah. No, I'm not having a go at you this time. But I'm saying, um, Paddy Lane, in I particular. Know. Yeah. Do you know, I'm he'll his, have his, to grow his up. First year minor. Yeah. Did, yeah. You know. Yeah. Is he, he grown he, up? He's raw. He has a lot to yeah. learn. Yeah. Great talent. But he's been producing it now. He's been producing for the under twenty. He's not Jesus. afraid. No. He's a he's a gutsy little devil. He's prepared Stacks. to have a go, isn't he? Like, and that yeah, he's, he's, that's good in the yeah. inside forward. You know. St Stacks yeah. are the under twenty, under twenty one mm -hmm. county champions. Mm -hmm. They're the minor league champions. The, obviously, yeah. you're still in the group stage but, but, of the minor county championship. But, but Stacks are featuring. They're underage. For it's years now, has yeah. been absolutely phenomenal. phenomenal yeah. Yeah. But as you said, they were always struggling to get a senior team to gel mm -hmm. out of that, to have the nucleus of it and yeah, the changing. And yeah, as you yeah. say, Michael O'Donnell, yeah. Shane O'Callaghan, these were absolutely yeah. standout, nailed on right. guys. Um, Quilter, That's right. you know, John, guys yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah, he's a name that doesn't seem to be around on no, the panel at the moment, whether he's abroad or... Yeah, I'm not too sure. Yeah. John, did, John O'Donnell, did Greg Ho I can't understand Greg Horn as a full forward. Did Greg Horn play out the field? I, I'd be more inclined to play his brother, who was on the sub and came on, Connor, who oh, yeah. oh, had a very good under-21 campaign, as you know, one of the players of the under-21 championship. I'd imagine I'd have Greg Horn around the, the middle third, the 40. He could have the midfield. Yeah, he didn't, really, uh, he didn't really stay inside as a full forward. Didn't he? No, it was really left to Paddy Lane and Young and Keen Purcell. So a two-man full forward. In, in, inside, yeah. yeah. Greg, yeah. Was, Greg had a roaming role. I think Feek Namangan uh, played very well the last day, kind of in a yeah. creative playmaking mm. role. You know, yeah. he doesn't do flashy things, yeah. but he always keeps the like attack. Like his dad, Cullum. He, uh, keeps, he, he keeps the attack well. uh, ticking over. He doesn't lose mm. possession that often. And what they do have is they do have a really good defence. And like Dylan Casey kind of marshaled the whole thing really well the last yeah. day. Now, you can say Legion didn't have their best forward line on duty. But Stacks were also missing Jack O'Shea and Ronan Shanahan, yeah. who were two certain starters in yeah. that in that defence. Yeah. And yet, if you look at the six that were there without those two lads, it was still a very strong defence. Um, I think Michael O'Donnell uh, did enough in his cameo the last day. I think he will start on uh, yeah. On yeah. Of course, Sunday. we're not in the camp, we have to stress as well, uh, we don't know, is a guy carrying an injury, yeah. coming yeah. back from an injury? Sometimes you'll be looking and saying, why is he not starting? Mm -hmm. There might be a very good reason why yeah. he's not yeah. starting, uh, and they might be only just giving him a half now, trying to get... Uh, to, but we'll know more now well, from the semi-final, Jimmy. Jimmy, have you some historical I, fact now? Some really... Nothing, uh, nothing historical, but just when we talk important. about Legion forwards. For me, Legion have been a team who've been underperforming for oh, a no. I, I, I give up. And a part of the reason for <laughs> We've that. We've done Glenn Flesk, <laughs> Fassa, <laughs> and now you're bad about the league. <laughs> I mean, there is, is no club in East Terry. It is because Do they, they, they were constantly the group? trying ah. to find a reliable full forward. They yeah. had Finbar Murphy in there, they tried Will Shine there, they had Padre Lucy in there, I think Jamie O'Sullivan was in there for a while, yeah. and no one was really sticking. And they had, you know, Ryan O'Grady and Will Shine and yeah. these kind of to feed off that central figure. No, yeah. David O'Sullivan. This year, for yeah. me, David yeah. O'Sullivan has been an He was way for why was he he's come back. Yeah. He was very good underage, David. Yeah. Did well, he, 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 for me. Did he play with the same? Did he, your college that you went to back in the day? He absolutely did. He won a Carnivora. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. That's you did. Did you win a Carnivora with uh, the same? He, he actually, I think he, <laughs> you scored, held the he, company, he scored the two goals in the 2010 Hogan Cup yeah. final. I think he got two penalties for the time. He you kicked seven the weekend, that's it, here. Seven points, seven he points, did, yeah. yeah. Good kicking. Oh. And if you look at it, if you were to, if you were to take, uh, well, if he, he, he makes the players around yeah, him better. Yeah, if you yeah, were to take away, if you point. took away Joe O'Connor's uh, fantastic performance because he was clearly the yeah, man of the yeah, match, especially yeah. on his second half performance, Keen Gamel and Dara Lyon were absolutely fantastic for Legion. Yeah. Dara Lyon is most certainly a player that's going to be looked at over the next few months. Yeah, I think I think you're right there. I've been talking to Andy Walsh, and he told me not to mind what 
Jimmy Darcy says that <laughs> Daryl Lyon is a very good player, right? And that he'll probably, he just, no. And the North both of us. Now, the point is, I was just about to say that the only <coughs> teams that Jimmy hasn't in East Kerry sort of had a go at is Dr. Crooks and Rat Moore. Obviously, he won't have a go at his own crowd spa and can come and uh, they're all players. That, well, they don't, but they get players from them. <laughs> now, we'll be talking next week. This day next week, hopefully, we'll be doing a preview of the senior club final and Dr. Crooks will be dealing with the Dr. Crooks Rat Moore game, which Dr. Crooks won, obviously, and they'll be playing Dingle in that final. So I still have another week. Uh, to get Timmy Bar- uh, Jimmy Barrett out of most clubs in East <laughs> Kerry. Um, I, now, I welcome the challenge. <laughs> I welcome the challenge. Now, I think uh, we will take a short break and we'll go forward then and we are going to discuss the two semi-finals of the weekend and I'm going to actually ask the, the lads this time to nail down their selection and not come back next week and tell me that they predicted that such and such team were going to reach the final when actually they did exact opposite. So I'll be depending on our <laughs> producer here and our floor manager, uh, John C. O'Shea. It's his own bar actually, so he probably has a vested interest. I- I'll check it with him. Uh, <laughs> and he will tell us uh, next week who was right and who was wrong. And I bet you at the end of the day, boys, I will hold the upper hand here. How much? And now we turn to the Kerry Petroleum Intermediate Club Championship semi-finals. They're on this coming Sunday. They'll be live and exclusive only on Clubber TV. And they're on in Fitzgerald Stadium here in Killarney. And uh, the first game is starting at 2 o'clock. And that features Austin Stacks, of course, uh, senior champions on multiple occasions. And they'll be taking on Glimbe Glincar. So a fascinating contest to open the day's play in the Fitzgerald Stadium. So now speaking to you here from a beautiful location, Jack C's in High Street, I think it is, uh, in Killarney. And uh, the weather is really, it's warm here. I put on my coat just to keep the heat, to keep the heat in and uh, keep the wind out. So now, lads, uh, we are going to have to assess this. And uh, and you're going to tell me, or you're going to tell me, well, Jimmy, you tell me no, uh, very little, except try and describe again those great points that Dara Roach scored. Dara actually contacted me and said, Mort, I'm delighted with your performance. That was a wonderful commentary you gave. Um, I remember looking at them thinking, yeah, Dara's well capable of putting these off. <laughs> I know what anybody else was thinking. Yeah, well, you weren't you were taking notes at the time. You weren't looking at the player. But anyway, uh, let's talk about the first semi-final. That's Austin Stacks. And I'm going to start with a man uh, who did a few Austin Stacks games. Um, John O'Dowd, Austin Stacks and Glimberg Glinkar. What's your gut feeling and where will the... Uh, where will this game be won and lost? Is it the power of the stacks, the paddy lanes, etc.? Their strong defence. Uh, have Glenbeck Lecar a chance at midfield with uh, McGillicuddy and Smith? And then the Wiley Old Foxes, Gavin O'Grady and Dan uh, up front. Uh, how do you read this? I think obviously to have a real chance, Glenbeck Lecar need to have a full strength team at their disposal. So Pack Kilkenny. Hopefully it was just a precaution maybe that necessitated his withdrawal from the game the last day. They'll need him. They'll obviously need uh, Gavin O'Grady uh, back from his uh, holiday. Um, they will be competitive for certain around the middle of the park. They're very strong at the back through the centre with Tommy Quirk and Liam Roach. Uh, Jack Brosnan, as John said earlier, is a fine player. And like the likes of Darren O'Sullivan, Caelum Tehan, Gavin, they're, they're very reliable in a, in, in a scoring sense. Um, for Glen Bay. I do think this is bonus territory now for Peter O'Sullivan and the mid carry team. I think they can go into this game. I don't see pressure on their shoulders, only whatever pressure they put on themselves. I think they can go out and give this everything they have for the 60 plus minutes and see where it takes them. On the other hand, there is gigantic pressure on Austin Stacks. They simply cannot afford to lose this match. The last uh, semi-final was yeah, last year. That'll yeah. be in their minds. Yeah. They would have expected to be in the final last year, lost on penalties. 
um, they cannot afford that to happen. Um, they probably will be without Jack O'Shea and Ron and Shanahan again. They might make a couple of changes, maybe one anyway. I do expect Michael O'Donnell to come back into the starting lineup. Um, Stacks will just have to get a more consistent level of performance over the game. Uh, I think they have the better team. I think they definitely have the better bench. If it comes down to the last 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I think they have the extra uh, players at their disposal to get over the line. Um, but at the same time, they, they have to stand up and be counted now. Yeah. Look, they, you are, you are favourites for a competition from the very start for a particular reason. And as John says, they mightn't have set the world alight, but they've kept going and they've got through the group stages, they've got through the quarterfinal, and I do expect them to get through this semi-final. Yeah. John Kennedy, obviously coming from a, a smaller rural club like you, yourself, you won three All-Ireland uh, senior medals with Kerry. How difficult is it for a small club? And let's face it, Glenbet is a smaller club, okay? Um, but it's in mid Kerry, at least it's in civilization. Uh, but if you're looking at a <laughs> club, uh, if you're looking at stacks from Tralee and the name they have, and you know, people talk about Austin Stacks, the great team back, you know, the, you'd know them to give me the history of them, uh, the Landers, the, the Bracker Regan, all the guys, you know, the Mikey Sheehy's, you know, Amuri, or you played yeah. enough of Stacks guys, mm-hmm. Denny Long. You know, I mean, this is a club steeped in history. They belong, they believe, and probably should be, a senior club. And they're meeting really a team that probably is a premier junior club with aspirations to be an intermediate club and a good intermediate club, Glenbeg, Glen Carr. Um, how does that, how does that uh, dynamic work? Uh, as sort of a giant, can, in other words, Glenbeg, Glen Carr produce a giant killing act? Yeah, it's the beauty of the Kerry County Championship, I suppose, isn't it? How competitive it is, Mort. The stacks have gone down to intermediate. Like you said, going back 70s and 80s, you had five or six All-Stars, and you had Andy Nilong, who was an All-Star from Cork. Incredible club with incredible tradition. Yeah. In, in, in unique history. All the All-Ireland medals in, in Rock Street. But, yeah. but that'll count for nothing at Sunday for Stirling Stadium, yeah. because, you know, Glen Bay, I suppose, it stands at one game each in, 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 so far this year. It does, it beat them in the County League, Glen Bay, yeah. the County League, yeah. and, and uh, then Stacks won the, the last game in the group stages. Um, Which was effectively a dead rubber. Well, you know, it was exactly, top yeah. of the table, it didn't uh, matter much. Um, Glen Bay are, like John said, are born in territory, I think. They mm-hmm. won't be looking at it that way, but from the outside, they're looking in. They've had a great year so far. The pressure will be on Austin Stacks, their favourites, to win the championship. Um, as we said earlier, what's their best 15? There's an embarrassment to riches, just to get the balance right. Yeah. Uh, so much competition for places that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, I'd say, a problem for Billy Lee and his management team. Yeah. But it's a the, nice one to it's have. It's a nice though. problem to yeah. have. It's the opposite to, a lot of, like you said, a lot of rural clubs struggling to get 15. Yeah. You know, these guys have another 15 on the line and you know would they be weakening the team if they come on you look at the guys that have worn the Kerry jersey super talent uh, a great individual talent up front like say Paddy Lane Keen Purcell you know yeah. young, young Kirby um, just out of, out, of, out of the minor team uh, they, they have no baggage these guys are going in with no pressure no. whereas some of the older guys coming back they'll be looking at the likes of Joe O'Connor and the Kerry contingent Armie Heinrich and Joey Nagel um, you know, uh, Dylan, yeah. Dylan, these guys yeah. to lead by example. Uh, I feel I would agree with John. I think Stacks will get over the line the next day. Uh, you know, it, it, they'll probably get a real battle from Glen Bay. Yeah. But I think it'll be the manner of the way they'll play and and you know the score line that they put up. It's not about winning. I think that from a Stacks point of view, getting to final, they'll need to put on their best performance of the year so far. I think. You know, yeah, because it yeah. has been a patchy intermediate championship for a team of their calibre and of their strength and depth. Very good. Uh, Jimmy, look, um, the two boys have obviously gone with the farm team, the strength, uh, the team with the, with the name from the big town, as it were, uh, and former sort of senior champions, All-Ireland all club champions, and they're up on this in the intermediate grade, and they want to get out of it. They didn't get out of it the first year, and they want to get out of it now. They have young talent, they have the older talent, we call them the more experienced lads. Do you think that it's as simple as that, that it's going to be the combination of a big club like Kansas or like uh, I, I don't Stacks actually think win it. 
although history and tradition do count, I don't think they impact as much on a game like this. Like John said, Glenn and Glen are coming into this with nothing to lose. Have a go. You know, you've had a great year, you've given it everything, you're going to be applauded off the field no matter what you do at the finish. Yep. You may as well go out there and go for it. Yeah. Stacks, to me, are very much a coming club. I think Tralee football is very much on the rise anyway. When I say they're a coming club, I'm actually talking all Ireland senior club championship Ten level. Ten years' time, I, 20 I think years' time. Four or five. Oh, fair enough. I, 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 th- I think it's coming fairly fast. I think they were actually unlucky to go down. They were, they were missing an awful lot of players at the time. It was yep. just yeah. a kind of a, a confluence of factors, yeah. all of which went against them, yep. all of which took them down. As I say, I think the age profile, Rahali's age profile was costing them. There wasn't enough coming up yeah. through the ranks. That's not the case with Stacks. There's no. plenty coming up through the ranks. Yeah. They want to get back senior. They got caught last year, and they were unlucky enough. It went down to penalties against Fossa. Absolutely cracking game against a great team, and that will happen. Can Glenn car match what Fossa did last year? I like Glenn car As I say, Neil Smith has been an absolute revelation to me. None of us need to be told anything about the likes of Darren or Gavin or yeah, Pat, you know, Colin McGillicuddy. Yeah. Is there, there with a long time. Yeah. All of these guys, they're a very good team. Are they going to be able to live with Stacks? Yeah. Scoring power. And Stacks have scoring power. To yeah. me, they didn't show it enough last year. This year, and maybe being in Division 2 helped. But all of those guys have been putting up totals and know how to do it. And I, I just can't see them holding all of Stacks over a full hour. I, 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 I said yeah. it, I said it right from the outset of this competition, and I know Stacks are not going to like me saying it, but as far as I'm concerned, why you might have led a three club to I, 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 club look at, I, I look at what Stacks have, and I honestly say you might not want to hear it out loud, lads, but you should be looking at an All Ireland Intermediate title, yeah. not just a Kerry title. Hang on a you, second. You off. should be able to look further. You must jump the second last and hurdle before the last hurdle. Abs- then- absolutely. But if you really want to do that and be that and become what we all know you're capable of, this is a game where, you, where I want to see it. Yeah. Be warned, That's... Seth. Jimmy Darcy's on your <laughs> tail. He's already tried to stop uh, the That's... probes. He already tried to stop Glintless. <laughs> he did manage to do that. He tried to stop uh, Fossa. He's done it yet. Obviously, he stopped his own club a long time ago. <laughs> so here we go now. And he's turned to Tralee and he wants to stop the stacks. He's telling the stacks that there are Ireland intermediate club champions. We're not talking about senior, intermediate club champions. And they still have to beat Glenbeck and Carr. So, because of that defiance being showed by him and a complete insult to me and from Glenbeck, I'm going to say Glenbeck and Carr to surprise the stacks on Sunday. My heart is overruling my head there. I think that's fair enough, lads. That's absolutely. The heart to win out <laughs> over the head. Yeah. You're not into relationships, though, so you're not? Not anyway, with it. I've, wa- I've watched a few Hallmark movies <laughs> in yeah. my time. Have you watched a few <laughs> chick flicks? Okay, <coughs> let's go on to the second game. And this is the, well, the first one is a big one, obviously, but the second one, people are really looking forward to Long Rangers against Fossa, I was told, during the break, to say Fossa, not uh, there's a man at the door uh, who's watching, keeping an eye on pronunciation. Um, <laughs> and uh, as he says, it's Fossa. So it's not Fossa. It's not Fossa. So anyway, Fossa or Fossa, whoever they are. Fossa are going to be playing Long Rangers. Now, I've seen a lot of Long Rangers. I've only seen uh, Fossa on, uh, on Clubber. Um, but I've been very impressed by them. And this, it promises to be a cracking contest. I'm going to start with Jimmy this time, since he's not liked in uh, Fossa, uh, our Fossa. Uh, so, Jimmy, now, you're looking here. Now, be careful here now, because you're going to tell me at the end of this that you expect Fossa not alone to win the semi-final, but they're also going to be in the Intermediate All-Ireland Final, where they'll probably end up playing the stacks. <laughs> uh, which is going to be some trick if they're going to manage it, Jimmy. But... Uh, serious, um, do you think, do you think, and you're a good tactician, right? Well, 
fairly good tactician. You watched a lot of football, young and old players. Do you think that the Lone Rangers defence that you saw in Glen Flesk on Sunday alongside the top class commentator, do you think that they can hold the Clifford brothers, we'll say, as a start off, Owen Talbert, uh, Matt Rini, uh, these guys? Like, you're looking at inter county teams that have been able to do it, you look at a whole slew of Kerry teams last year in the club championship who weren't able to do it until Milltown Castle Main won the final. And the previous year, nobody could do it. Are you telling me that Long Rangers are that good at the back that they can do it? I'll tell you, Long Rangers again, for me, have the kind of numbers they haven't had in a long time. They've always had great players. They haven't always had enough backup. But they've known their last couple of under-21 teams. They've gotten a lot of players out of those. They have a deep bench. Um, they're like stacks in one way with underage talent, aren't they? Can, can you hold the Cliffords? Can you hold the O'Shea brothers? You're trying to win back I'd, now with some kudos. I would give Fossa a slight nod for this one. For me, huh? I'd give Fossa a slight nod for this one. You'd be back in the nugget before you know it. <laughs> <laughs> And barred from bunkers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you do um, think that, I think, would you? Yeah. I, I think it'll be an absolutely cracking game. Now, a thing for me, um, Fossa lost the final last year to Milton Castlemaine. Uh, Dingle lost out in the Munster Club final. In both cases, I don't think it was the individual games. I think, I think that it was kind of fatigue after a long run that caught both, both mm-hmm. teams, when they really needed, in, in that last quarter of an hour, I just thought the legs weren't there. The bodies just couldn't give that little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think this will be an absolutely, absolutely cracking game. Um, and I, I hate falling back in cliches, and it is a cliche at this stage, but... Everything is almost equal. How do you stop David Clifford? And you can't take a sledgehammer to him while he's sleeping. On a football field, how do you stop David Clifford? You know, that's you stop no, that's not disrespecting any of his teammates, anybody yeah. else. You stop the Paul, supply Paul, ball. Party is absolutely lord in games. Yeah. The thing about party is it's like there's three party cliffords on the field at any given time. Yeah. You know, he's everywhere doing everything, always doing it right. Yeah. I, Three persons in one God. Long Rangers are coming. But are you into this, religion? This isn't the year. This isn't the year for Long Rangers. You, so you're this, listen, <laughs> you, you show me a fellow who can turn water into wine, we'll talk business, all right? I know, right. <laughs> but talking about water into wine, you are now dishing... Uh, long ranges and saying having praised them <laughs> and said that they're coming and now you said like they might as well not show up because there's go- they're going to be marking not one party clipper but three party clippers so that makes i'm trying to think now logically here okay which is difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> i am trying to think logically. I, I didn't mean to confuse you Bert. i'm sorry for yeah that. The, well i know i there's david clippers and three parties and there's three o'shea brothers that's seven of them i know what they'll have to drop a couple jimmy but you were saying, basically, that you think Fossa should be able to edge this one out. I do, and I think it'll be a high-scoring game. Be fine. I, I, I think know. it'll be a great game to watch, but I yeah. think Fossa will have maybe two points over them yeah. to finish. Fossa, yeah. yeah. Not Fossa. Sorry. Right, it's okay. Uh, uh, our, our, our speech and language man is gone. He's been called to the bar. I don't mean he's gone to study law. He's been called to the bar. Now, uh, John... Listen, you have been known as a Fossa admirer, Fossa admirer for a long time, right? You here now have a chance of making a case for Long Rangers. Long Rangers, Kilogan, they educated me in Kilogan, would you believe? Some would say poorly, shut up, <laughs> right? And uh, I would know Clog, a lot of Kilogan lads, I would know their parents, etc. And I would say that they are a club that really need a feel that they should be seener and you have to earn the right to be there so they're going to be going all out and they're going to say if we can stop the supply of ball going into David Clifford that's half the battle done how do they do that I think 
Lawn Rangers and Liam Hassett and his management team, I think they're in a bit of a catch-22 situation here. Because like I said earlier, I do think overall of the four teams let, left, they have the best combined set of forwards plus the substitutes that are there. The question is on Sunday, do they trust their defenders enough to not filter lots of bodies back in an effort to curtail the Clifford brothers and Emmett O'Shea. Yeah. Have they the confidence to say, we back our defenders, okay, you're probably going to have two around David, but do we have the courage to say, okay, we might play with seven defenders, but we won't play with eight or nine and really clog up the space, because that will affect their forward power at the other end of the field if they concentrate too much on stopping the Cliffords. I think Lawn Rangers best possibility of winning this game is to go for the match in an attacking sense and mm-hmm. try and get as much ball as possible into their forward line regularly not go overly defensive to keep the score down I think that's their best way if they want to win the game I know you could say maybe that's going to be a little foolish if you leave mm-hmm. too much space for the Cliffords and in that regard I do think the loss of David Mangan this mm-hmm. year and at this yeah. moment in time is absolutely massive. I think he's the leading candidate. If he was fit 100% and playing well, he'd be the man to pick up David. Absolutely. Yeah. Like Owen Clifford might well go and pick up Paddy now from the start on Sunday. And I think they do have players maybe more size-wise that can pick up Paddy. Um, picking up David now is a different kettle of fish without David Mangan uh, being there. Yeah. That's from the Rangers' perspective. As regards ball winning around the middle, Mert, you mentioned it there. Can they stop the supply? I'm not sure they can. I'm not sure well, that... I think Keen O'Shea and Matt Rennie can definitely break even, at least with Stephen Seeley and Tom Whittleton around the middle of the park. And if they do that, yeah. I don't think even Lon Re- I don't think Fossa would even need 50-50. Sometimes... If they get 45, 55 or even 40, 60 and they can get the ball into the lads and Emmett O'Shea. Let's not underestimate Emmett O'Shea. This could be a player that could come along on a Sunday and kick four or five points from play himself and could be the yeah. match winner if too much attention is paid to the Clifford brothers. Yeah. Um, overall, I agree with Jimmy. Lawn Rangers are coming and coming and definitely will be better over the next few years and have had a really good season up to now. And I think this is a really hard game to call. Long Rangers could win this game, but again, I think they have to really be brave if they want to win it. But I'd never back against the Clifford brothers in a game like this where they, they sense silverware is close. They sense a spot in a final is close. And let's not forget, Fossa feel that they left one behind them last year against Milton Castlemaine. Now, they mightn't have been expected to go all the way to the final last year. But that doesn't mean that when they did get there, they didn't expect to go and win it. Exactly, yeah. And I think they can take another step to try and uh, redress that result from last year. So I give a yeah. tentative nod to Fossa. John, I'm going to put this to you. I would disagree a little with John O'Dowd there. I would think that if Long Rangers have any chance of winning this game, and they have, right, but if they are, are going to have the optimum chance to winning it, I think they're going to have to be smart at the back. I think they're going to have to funnel them in back, right? Because they have pace in attack. They have Derek Cleary, they have Fikra Clifford, right? They have the two Hassets. Like, if you have them around the halfway line and you have two of the other forwards back, say the Patrick Daly, you have the wing forwards back or whatever, you will still be able to counterattack and hurt Fossa because these guys have got pace. And even John Burke and some of the guys... I think if you take on Fossa, 15 against 15, there isn't a hope that you prevent number one, Pardy, from being a hugely influential figure as he's been all year uh, with the club, and David then to cut loose. The things he can do with a ball, I was oohing and eyeing about Dara Roach. Can you imagine what I'd be doing yeah. with, with David Clifford? So my point is, I think unless they uh, pack the defence a little, for a lot of the game and counter attack that they may have to dispense with their two tall midfielders not both of them and play more a, another player who either will be attacking or will help defensively to cut out the threat because you can be guaranteed last Sunday uh, Jeff Flesk put 
a high press against Long Rangers and it upset them somewhat in the first half when they shot four or five points at the end coming up to half time. Mm-hmm. They applied the press from time to time. Jim Smiley and obviously Pat Flanagan had that devised. And you can be sure they and Fismaris, etc., they'll be thinking of that again. So my point is, will you go would you favour Fossa or uh, Long Range being cautious at the back and defensive and hope to take uh, Foss on the break? Or would you go gung ho? I suppose Mort it's it's about getting the balance right really, I suppose. Uh, if they go ultra defensive and close up at the back. You know, Fossa have the players like Keane O'Shea, Emmett O'Shea, Matt Rinney to kick long range scores. They've yeah. done that throughout the year. They're capable of kicking from 40, 45 metres out. Party, they have it the same. They're depending on the breakaway, but there's a physicality about Fossa. They, they track back, and I think Party's influence. He's, he's playing at the half back line around the middle. He's, he's working, he's hitting hard. Yeah. I've, uh, you know, I've seen him in, in two games this year for the club. and the his quarterback, as he's known as. Exa- his yeah. work rate is incredible. Not with the Steelers, though. He, he, plays, on, he plays on the edge. And yeah. some of the tackles are, are ferocious. And, yeah. and, and, you know, Fossa have players to do that. On the other hand, if Fossa, if, if Lion Rangers want to win the game, I think they'll have to have more players up above to ask questions of the Fossa defence when they do get position. Yeah. They can't be depending on the breakaway alone. So it is a fascinating contest. Yeah. Um, it should you be know, a cracking game. It should be a cracking game. I think the experience FASA had gained. Let's not forget they came up from junior to intermediate last year, went all the way to the final. Yeah. Uh, the experience they got, I think the hurt yeah. they got from losing. Do you think they're stronger this year? I think they are. Uh, Reen Collin has is a year older. A year older. Some yeah. of these guys so. that come in uh, are a year older, to be honest. And as I said earlier on, I think the physicality of them and uh, you know the way they're strengthened up, strengthened conditioning. Yeah. You know they. Beating Stacks last year in the semi-final, you know, not you know, Milton caught him in the final. They beat him in the final. Once they caught him, they beat yeah, him. Yeah. That was a huge disappointment. Mm-hmm. Maybe a lot of people were thinking they have the Stacks beat. And now they're going to win it. It didn't yeah. happen. And I think you know, I've said it previously. Listen to Paulie in a few interviews. Yes, he's very controlled. Yes, he's very calculated in his yeah. interviews. They're not uh, looking too far ahead either. No, next hurdle. We want to get to where we were last year. Yeah, that statement, I think says it all. Yeah. I think they will get over the line and I think yeah. they will be at Long Rangers. It could be a great contest. It could be a great contest. So, we're going to summarise up so anybody who is watching this and want to find out who's going to win the, the ga- these two games, the two semi-finals, I think we're fairly unanimous in uh, to, the, to a large degree. Jimmy, just to retrieve any possibility of you being allowed drive through Fossa, <laughs> that I mind being accepted for a sandwich and the golden nugget. Uh, and then you, the possibility of you being crowned king of the rock, now that you have been an All-Ireland Intermediate Final. I presume, <laughs> are you going Fossa and Stacks? It was one of the games of the year last year. I think we'll be seeing a repeat of it this year. Absolutely. Deciding on penalties in the final, you seem to know a lot about what's going forward. No. Could be. <laughs> ah, very good. I'm going to call you Mystic, uh, Mystic Jimmy. <laughs> right, John, what are you? First, John, John O'Dowd. Yeah, I'm going to stick with Stax and Fossa as well. And I don't think the other North Kerry men, although you're in opposite sides in North Kerry, um, in neighbouring parishes. Are you the one parish? No, different parishes. No, different Very long for yeah. then actually at one parish at the That's right, uh, yeah. meeting then they got together. Uh, what do you think is the uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not gonna slow distinction anywhere by the way. Uh, who do you think is gonna make the final? I, I think Stacks and Fossa again. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to be uh, Stacks and Fossa too. Oh I went for Glen Bay Glen Car, did I? <laughs> you did. <laughs> I think it's gonna be Glen Bay Glen Car and Fossa. Which means that I can't go down Rock Street. <laughs> anyway, I can't go down there anyway. Uh, so, yeah, so it's going to be really, really. I'm looking forward to it. Are you looking forward Absolutely. to those games? Yeah. I think they're going to be Absolutely. two great semi finals. And because they're two great semi finals, we're going to have them live on Clubber. So, get your subscription in, get your, buy your pass. Um, and you'll pass, there's still the entire county championship to go. There's the senior final the following week. There's Premier Junior quarter final, semi finals, and final. So there's a load of action to go yet. And for 140, now we say 150 euro with small change, um, you can see all of these in the comfort of your own home. And you can look back at the games and some of the games along the way as well. And I tell you, there's been some crack- cracking games as the boys have been talking about. 
and next week we'll be showing you highlights of one amazing game back in Dingle that the two Johns did. That was Dingle and uh, Ken Mayer. And myself and Jimmy were up at the um, game in Rabig in Ratmore and Crokes. And they were much better, obviously, than Ratmore on the day, but it still came down to just a two point. Ratmore never gave up, but really, Crokes with Michal Burns, etc., back. So that's going to be next week. We're going to be reviewing that. Make sure and tune in. Now, um, as I said, uh, we're going to have uh, probably a, a longer show. Uh, next Sunday in terms of we're going to have a build up to the game we hope to have some guys with our Ireland medals other than John Kennedy sorry <laughs> I rephrase we are going to some fellas with our Ireland medals including John Kennedy <laughs> uh, we may even have a female involved uh, next week we like to include the ladies as well I'm being a ladies man myself all in favour and uh, also uh, we will have uh, <coughs> Interviews after the game and uh, with the, the club or man of the match. And what a prospect. You're going to have some of the best uh, county players and club players. And you, we're looking forward to seeing the Cliffords, obviously. Uh, the O'Shea's. We're looking forward to Owen Clifford, another Clifford in uh, Kilogden. Fiacre Clifford, another Clifford. Is there any thing other than Clifford playing? Uh, Dara Cleary, he's a fine footballer. We have Shane O'Sullivan, what a goalkeeper. Then you go to Glenbeck Lincar, you'll see the old Wiley Fox, Dan O'Sullivan, Gavin O'Grady, possibly Pat Kitty Kenny, Young Gun and Liam Smith. Look at the stacks, Paddy Lane, Daniel Kirby, you know, Joe Connor. Uh, it's unbelievable the amount of uh, talent that's going to be on show. Don't miss it on Clubber. Get your subscription in. And as I said, there's a load of football to come from all around the country. And as even championship, Bally Gunner should be a great game up in Waterford if you want to tune in for that. Now, uh, I, all that's left to do is to thank my panel. And uh, I'd like... No, I'm not thanking you yet. Uh, <laughs> thanking John Kennedy. Thanks, John. Nice it's a long trip from where you came from uh, to Killarney to uh, a couple of fireplaces. Uh, next, we have uh, John O'Dowd. Thanks, John. Thank Thanks you, Mark. for your contribution. And Jimmy, as always, knowledgeable. And I hope that I haven't made any divisive comments to you that make you unpopular in any part of the country, <laughs> because from what I can gather, you are welcome anywhere you go. A metal man who's welcome anywhere you can go, and it's not me, by the way, it is our producer, cameraman, stage manager, everything, uh, that's John C. or she. Uh, thank him as well, and to thank him for providing his premises here in High Street in Killarney, Jack C's. And by the way, if you ever come to Killarney, this is a lovely pub to come into. You'll meet some great characters here, and uh, there is, I don't drink it, but I believe there's a nice point here as well, and uh, it's uh, right in, uh, in, in High Street, uh, right in the middle of Killarney, um, technically, and behind us, you have all the mountains. Now, I can't go through all them for you, because I'll be corrected, but they are beautiful. So when you come to Killarney, it's, a, it's such a beautiful town, and then you have the cheap petrol, you will meet a jab, he'll bring you up uh, the road. No traffic problems here in Killarney now <laughs> since the summer is over. Hot summer, says you. So it's really a beautiful place to be. So if you want to spend some time before the lads go back to school, I would suggest that Trilly is the place to be. <laughs> That's it for this week from Mort Murphy and all the lads. We'll be back with the uh, games at the weekend and then, of course, our preview next week of the Senior Club Championship Final.